Good morning and welcome to our story time. Um, it's been rather hot here lately and so even the church gets a little hot from where I'm speaking but I thank God for air conditioning because we have some really bad heat right now, right? Yeah, it's pretty hot. The kids here say it's hot too. So today we're going to have a lesson from the book of Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 through 29. It's a very, um, a very popular story, and I've, I think you've heard it before if you've gone to church much. But first, I want to say thank you for tuning in and listening, and um, I hope that this will be a blessing to you. I uh, have really enjoyed doing these classes at just once a month, and I hope that you've enjoyed uh, listening to them and have received a blessing. Before we start, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the word of God that helps us and tells us how we live, can live for you, and how we can live without a lot of confrontations and problems, God, because you have a life for us that leads us away from all that and helps us follow you. And I pray today, as we look into the word of God and study this lesson, that all of us here and those out there will also receive a blessing and get an understanding that perhaps they didn't have before. Thank you again and help me, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. So the title of our little talk today, our little Bible story is, Are You Wise or Are You Foolish? Is your life actually following after Jesus or are you just living life for yourself? You can live your life for yourself but it doesn't always follow what Jesus has. It mostly always follows what we want first. So let's take a look at our story today from the Bible. And the story is found, as I said, in Matthew chapter 7. And we're starting at verse 24. This chapter is Jesus speaking to a lot of people. And so he just goes right down the line talking about lots of things that are important to us to be able to live for him and do right. So at this point in time, he is um, talking with his disciples and other people that were there as well. And he was talking in parables. And parables are stories that um, he, he talks about, he uses them, but it doesn't actually mean sometimes that it's an actual thing that takes place. But in this one, he's doing that, but you'll see that it makes a lot of sense the way Jesus has, has talked about this. So he starts out in verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And what he's saying before that is that he was talking to the Pharisees, he's talking to his disciples, there's a lot more people than I have right here, and they were asking him questions, and um, at one point he says, if you are doing things in your own name and trying to do miracles and say you're doing them and, and you're not doing them using my name, then he, I'm going to say to you, I never knew you. So he's talking about all kinds of things, but here we go, he says, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, the sayings that he said, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Now, <clears throat> if you're building a house, let's just, this is kind of high on a rock, but it's what I have. But in those days, I think they were able to accomplish this. They would just take probably something to cut out the rock. And Jesus says, you put your house up there. I will call you a wise man. He said, uh, Jesus has gathered a crowd and he's saying to the first person, about a wise man. What is a wise man? And why is he wise if he puts his house up on a rock? And he said, because he built his house on a very strong and permanent rock. And Jesus says that this wise man is wise because he doeth them. He, he hears Jesus talking about what he needs to do to be wise, and he follows Jesus and does what Jesus said, that's a wise man. If we follow the word of God, which is all true, it's all Jesus's words, then we're going to be wise the, the older we get because the Bible is full of wisdom because Jesus wrote it. And so he's saying, you're building upon a rock, 
your house on a rock, that's a very wise thing. And Jesus says in verse 25, and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. So Jesus is saying here, all kinds of things came across this house right up on top of a mountain. It's raining, it's stormy, the winds are blowing, the waves are coming up. And he says the house remained there because it was founded on a rock. In other words, it was built on something very sturdy. That's what he was saying. And so Jesus is saying, as the rain descended and the floods came, the winds blew, for it was founded upon a rock. It did not fall. And this is what Jesus is saying about our life. Our life is to be built on the Bible and on Jesus Christ and on his sayings, his things that he tells us to do, verses and uh, many things that he tells us to do. And when we study the Bible, we learn and it helps us stay strong. But there is one more point here that needs to be said, and that is you cannot have a house or a life upon a rock unless you have accepted the rock. And that rock is Jesus. He says in the Bible, I am the rock. And um, he says also that any, anybody that is built on a rock, their life on, on me, will be helped and you will have be a, considered a wise man because your life will be showing others all about Jesus. And um, the interesting thing is that when we have stormy days, Jesus calls himself the rock because we have stormy days. There's days even for children and for adults that some days are just really not good and there's no answer. Sometimes things happen to us, especially adults as we get older, things happen and we have to remember, I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart. My house, my life house is like a rock. It's because Jesus has come into my heart. And so he helps me live what the Bible says. So what Jesus is saying to his disciples and to the others is that if you start with me in your life, you will have no storms that take, takes over your life that you cannot get over. There's, um, there's a, a family right now that's going through a hard, a real hard, hard time. And uh, some of them are not saved. And so it's going to be a very hard time if this person um, has what they think that this person has and there's only some that are praying and others aren't saved. And the rock that you stand on is Jesus Christ and his word. And if you don't have that, your life is sad because what do you have to hope in? If you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart, you have nothing to hope in. And it's just whatever comes into your life. So let's go to the next one he talks about. And the next one is found 20, in verse 26. And it says, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And so we have another house in contrast to the first one. And this house is built on the sand. And as you can see, there's not much of this house left because what Jesus says here, the storms come, the rains come, the winds come, and they beat on the house. And this house and that house, they were made of like what we would call more clayish type of houses. So with this house here, it had no hope being right on the water and the rains coming down on it and it didn't have any sure foundation. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and it was, it was a great fall. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these things, the people were astonished. The word astonished means surprised at his doctrine. Doctrine is just teaching. And Jesus wrote the Bible. So his doctrine is right here. This is the doctrine we believe in as Christians. And they were surprised at all he knew. And they were surprised that he spoke and they could understand. Uh, the rains came and beat upon this house and we see that it falls. But Jesus says, not only does it fall, but because they don't have him, it was a great fall that happened. And so these people here survived. This house is okay. It's founded on a rock. And we, we're saying that's Jesus. 
this house was founded on nothing. Maybe they go to church sometimes, maybe they didn't, but the house is going to fall if you don't have Jesus in your heart and live for him. But these people said they were astonished at his doctrine. And um, the people listening to Jesus were amazed of his knowledge and doctrine or his teaching. They had never heard anyone speak like him and the people could understand Jesus. You know, it's very interesting. My parents and I, I was in the family when my parents were missionaries and we, would, we went to one place. I remember it was clear out in the, you know, long, long, far, really far away from our town. And my dad had to cut down a few trees as we went, just those small little trees so we could get in. And when we got to the place where these people lived, they didn't have any water, uh, like they didn't have a well or anything. And it was very, very dusty and very, very hot, probably over 100 degrees and very dusty, not much water. Um, and the people were very sick when we got in there to this. It's not a tribe, but it was a little town. And um, I remember my dad speaking in Spanish to them and telling them about Jesus. And one of the old men that was, I'll never forget, he came out of his little house there and he said, I've been praying for someone to come and tell me about is it God you're talking about? Is that who it is? No one had ever told them anything about God. And the thing was that the place they lived was just completely, they didn't have hardly any water. They were very sick and it was just terrible. But Jesus told them, uh, m my father told them about Jesus. And when he did, almost all of the little village came to know Jesus Christ because they were waiting for him. They believed the Bible when my dad spoke through the Bible, using the Bible, and they believed it right away. They said, we've been wanting something like this, and this is what the Bible says about the person who has their house on a rock. They want to listen to it. They want to know more about the Lord, and they want to live for the Lord and get all they can from the Bible and understand it. And these people said, wow. We've heard the Pharisees speak, saying it in the next verse, he says, for he taught them, Jesus did, as one having authority. That means he knew what he's talking about. And not as the scribes, because the scribes couldn't explain anything. They didn't know anything about the Bible. And here's Jesus who wrote the Bible, knows everything, and he could explain it so well to them. So I believe that day, probably Jesus saw many, many become his followers and accept him as their savior. And you know, even though you're young, and there's some here that are adults are listening. It doesn't matter. We all can read the Bible. We all need to read the Bible. We need to stand on the Bible and we need to realize that when we have a problem, we need to go to the word of God and pray and ask Jesus to help us and help us with our life because our life can be short, our life can be long, but with Jesus Christ, our, our life can count for something every day. And you want your life to count for something every day. Every day when I go somewhere, if I'm gonna be leaving the house and, and going to the store or going somewhere, I always pray and ask the Lord to help me to give a tract out or to talk to someone about Jesus. And he always helps me do that. And that's what helps other people come to know Jesus Christ. I was with someone yesterday. She didn't really want to listen, but I was right next to her sitting at a table. So she kind of had to listen to me. I was very careful because I know she wasn't real interested, but you know, there's one thing you can do when you talk to someone who doesn't know Jesus. You can kind of, you can pray and ask the Lord to help you and then just kind of ask the Lord to tell you what to say. Just, just use a certain path. And so I wasn't telling her to get saved that yesterday, but I was telling her about Jesus and she personally had never heard anything about that and she wasn't real interested but that's okay because Jesus can work in her heart and this is what it's like when we are on the solid rock and we're trusting in Jesus Christ our lives are different and we can help others but if you end up on on, on living you could even be on a rock you can even start out with Jesus Christ in your life but you don't follow him no one knows the difference they think you're the house on the sand but really, basically, when we have Christ in our lives, he helps us with everything. Your studies, your school, getting along with friends, your, your kids that are with you in class, 
and your own life can be something that stands out for the Lord with God's help. And these people said, wow, this man teaches us where we can understand it. And that's what Jesus does for us. He teaches us we have the Holy Spirit of God, and the Holy Spirit of God helps us. And he, he does have authority. He has authority over everything in this world which he created. And he can help us, and we can be something for him to others. Jesus Christ loves you, and everyone has a life to live. We can live it on the solid rock, or we can live it on the sand. And Jesus wants us, of course, to realize that he's our helper, that he is our savior, and that he stays in our life through all of it. He lives in your heart, and that helps you keep your house on the solid rock. You don't have to worry about Satan coming down and telling you things and pulling you around in your brain and everything else and getting into trouble because Jesus Christ, when he comes into your heart, makes a difference and he stays and he never leaves. And the interesting thing, the two things I want us to remember is in verse 24, Jesus said, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth him, that person is a wise man. But everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. So we see God saying you can be foolish and not, not go the right path, or you can follow me and be assured that you are on the right path and your life will count for something. So I don't know about you, but I want my life to count for Jesus Christ and I want to be used of him. So I put my house on the solid rock and I pray that if you have not put your house on the solid rock, your life into Jesus's hand, you need to do that and accept him as your personal savior. The Bible says, but as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, John 1, 12. That's for you if you have not received Jesus Christ as your personal savior, and then your life changes, and you become much clearer thinking, your life goes better because Jesus Christ is in control of your life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your word where you tell us the difference between those who trust in you and believe in you and those who just live their life however they want. And I pray if there's someone today listening, Lord, that they would want to have you in their heart and their life. And I pray that they would do so, Lord, trust you as their personal savior. And if there's someone uh, listening to, uh, today that is saved, but their house is not in order, I pray, God, that you would help them to turn their heart and their life back over to Jesus and follow him so that they can have a life that's, that's meaningful and that is pleasing to you. We thank you again for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me today, and I look forward to seeing you in a month. So thank you, and have a great day. Goodbye. Little by little, inch by inch, it's a cinch.